ladies and gentlemen, this is 8 News. Well, Bucky's has just opened up in Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, it's, uh, they have one in St. Augustine and now one in Daytona, maybe 50 miles out from each other. So, this is awesome. Bucky's is opening up here in Florida. Um, two huge locations, one in Daytona, one in St. Augustine. So this is going to increase uh, jobs. It will increase revenue for this, uh, the counties it's in. I think personally, it's a it's a win win for all counties to have a Bucky's, and they have great barbecue. I tell you, their barbecue is very good. I don't know where it is in um, Daytona, but I know where it is in St. Augustine. It's at the World Golf Village in St. Augustine, and uh, that place needed a huge facelift of a gas station. Because the only gas station really was there was the BP and the uh, Dailies. And I think it was the BP and the Dailies that were there. And it really didn't have anything. You know, the Dailies had a subway. And that subway brings a lot of memories to me. Because I was going to work at that subway. And I just never got hired there. For some darn apparent reason, they just never hired me at that subway. But reason, I, but I found a better job after that. So... Uh, it was like I was looking for work, and I was going to be a manager at that subway, and it was kind of weird how they were like, well, the trainer you're replacing, the, the manager you're replacing is going to train you because we're getting rid of him, but he doesn't know. So, yeah, that was kind of a, a weird situation. I, I, I wouldn't even took the job because, to be honest with you, that's, that's, that was just, uh, that was cold-hearted what they did to that poor guy, so... I probably would have never took the job, to be honest with you. Um, but I got a great, I had a great job in a um, telemarketing company. Um, getting paid pretty good, just calling people to see if they needed extended warranties. Which, you know, that's pretty lucrative when you sell a warranty. You know, I, I sold a lot of warranties. You know, and I was really honest with people. To be honest with you, it was one of the better. Um, better companies that had warranties. I forgot what the company's name was, but it was one of the better companies that actually did what they said they would do. It was a Christian-run uh, warranty company, and uh, I, I, I I, only... I wanted to put my name on something that I believe fully in. Like, I believed in that company. So, I uh, worked from home, actually, I remember, and then I called up people, and um, it was actually a, you know, it was actually a good lucrative gig. Unfortunately, the company went belly up, because they couldn't afford to, to pay all the, the warranty stuff, and you know how it went, you know, it just, things, you know, like U.S. Fidelis started paying, and then they stopped. U.S. Fidelis was one of them, a long time ago I used to work for. Yeah, I was not a big fan of working for them. They were kind of good in the beginning, and then when I left, they just started going downhill. So, U.S. Fidelis, if you remember, they used to be a car warranty company. And in the beginning, they started paying, and then they just ceased paying, and leaving people stranded in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. So, uh, I never was part of that type of huge thing, but I, you know, I used to sell a lot of uh, questionable things back in the day. Um... I had to look into it, and if, if I liked it, I would put it, but most of these companies now, um, I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole because, you know, with the economy and the insurance, you know, I would work for Geico, I would work for Progressive, you know, I would work for one of those, because they're a big insurance company, but not one of the fly-by-night insurance companies that just say, hey, we'll, you know, we'll spot you if your, your refrigerator busts or something. I stopped doing that because it, it became a little questionable because I want to put my name on something that's good. But there's a Bucky's that's open in um, uh, Daytona, one's in St. Augustine, and I'm pretty happy. Uh, yeah, people are looking for work. Uh, Bucky's pays pretty damn good when you, you work for them. They have a good salary. They actually don't have a salary. It's like $19 an hour to be a cashier. That's ridiculous. That's huge. That, that's like life-changing, $19 an hour. Well, you may not think it is. As a single guy, with not a, you know, who lives in basically, I don't spend this to spend. I spend on what I need. So, to me, $19 an hour could have me save some money and live a perfect life, in my mind. $19 an hour, would, 
I'm just single, so I have a dog and a cat. That's all I have. So, really, $19 an hour would be perfect for me, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not looking for that much money. I live in my, you know, I don't, you know, I live in within my means. I don't live to extraordinary levels. It's, you know, like, I don't live in these ex big mansions. My, my whole house is only 650 square foot. It's a small house with two bedrooms. But I live here and I own it outright. So, you know, I, I, I love it, you know. It's, um, I don't really care on how, you know, I had a lot of women in my life that came and gone and just said, you know, I can't live in a small house like that. And that's fine. That's their prerogative. But I am very happy and content for what I have, and uh, I'm very proud of what I have. And I'm, I'm content, and I'm not asking for anything else. I like small spaces, to be honest with you. Um, I can do everything I can, and uh, it's actually a very comfortable place. In my book, because it's just me and the dog and cat, so I have a fenced-in backyard, let the dog and cat run around, stuff like that, so... Really, there's nothing really I don't like about this place. It's, uh, I'm very content, and I'm going to stay here the rest of my life. So, yeah, I'm very content. So, when I can find a $19 an hour job, that's kind of like a million dollars in my book, to be brutally honest with you. That's like a million dollars in my book. It's like, I will be so self-secure, that wouldn't even be funny. A lot of people who have a lot of family, like, like two kids and a wife... They, that, they can't live within their means with that. But I can live in my means with a $19 or even a $15 an hour job. I could because I'm just a single guy. And I don't buy that much stuff. And I just, uh, personally, I am very content in everything. You know, less is more and more is less in my book. Um... Frankly, I if I have less, it's more in my book. <laughs> it's just like uh, I'm very content and I'm very humbled for what I have. And uh, a lot of people need to be humbled because if you're not humbled, then frankly, you should not be. Uh, you need to do some fact checking on yourself. And uh, if you can. If you can put your head down at night and put your head down on your pillow and say, you know, I did a wonderful job today. I do that every night. I, I think of reminisce the day, what I do, and I sit down and I ponder what I did in life. Or that day. And if I can say, I did wonderful, then you did wonderful. If you said, I did horrible, then you did horrible. But I never have a horrible feeling in my head. I always have a positive and what I could work on. I can tell you right now what I need to work on. I need to stop worrying about the things that I don't need to worry about. Maybe you have a problem that you don't, uh, you know, you worry about, I don't know, economic collapse. You can worry about that till the cows come home. But it's going to happen. You know, why would you, you know, get all worried on something that's going to happen and you can't really fix it? So... I have a problem of fear fear of, you know, a lot of that stuff. But maybe you should just put your mind into something else. And um, try, to, try to get life. Because life is never going to really change, really. It's just going to be, well, that's happening. That's happening. But it's going to be like a norm kind of situation. How I've seen life all through my life is just like... Like, 2008 crash. The 2008 crash, it was like a normal day, to be honest with you. Yeah, people people were just like, oh, this, this. They were just talking about it. But really, it was... I never really seen with my own two eyes anything that, you know, really happened. You know, it was just like, okay, I go into the store and there's less, little less people in the store... Or I go to the store and it's just the normal everyday thing. So, really, I don't think... Personally, I think it's just going to be like everyday norm. I don't think it's going to be an other civilization collapse type of situation. I don't think we're at that point yet, but... 
We could, but then you can't change that, so why would you get all bent out of shape? You know, you should just... When it comes, it comes, and then you have to deal with it. But, uh... You know, I always, I'm always prepared in case if bad shit happens. Always prepare. But, really, just... You can do as so much as one individual, so... You know, it's just... I'm not telling you not to prepare. I'm telling you just to sit back, relax, and enjoy life as, as you can. And, you know, prepare and all that stuff. I, I don't tell people not to prepare. I always tell people to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. That's how I live my life. I prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And uh, if we live that mentality, prepare for the worst and hope for our best, we will see best times ahead of us. I'll talk to you later. Love you all.